Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes. Autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around the world. At Project purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions and to create space on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our society at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable enable our children to thrive. Now for those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we also write thought pieces every other Sunday. We have a thought piece scheduled to drop this upcoming Sunday, so be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. Now, if it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're available on 12 different podcast platforms for your listening leisure, and we've provided you with access to the links in the description down below. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe, hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time we post. And of course, if you like these conversations and you want to keep them going, like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. Hello, les meufs et les mecs. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week basis. And today, the topic of discussion is mental wellness. And on the topic of discussion of mental wellness, this week, I'm going to talk about the power of intention and what intention really is and what it isn't. So I think that a lot of the times we hear the word intention, we hear the word mindfulness, and we think, okay, just be a little bit more deliberate in the way that we make our choices and the way that we form our decisions. But it's deeper than that. Intention is almost like a pre-programming. And so I want to talk a little bit about how intention has helped me really in my healing journey, how it's helped me to forgive and how it's helped me make the leaps and strides and the steps that I'm taking to close different events, situations, and even relationships in my life in a way that serves me. So when I talk about intention, I'm talking about deciding how it is that I'm going to respond and react to the things within me, how I'm going to respond to the emotions that are attached to different events, situations, people external to me because of memories or triggers or, you know, the nature of those relationships in and of itself. So intention is really me telling my body what we're going to do with the emotional releases that we're going to get as part of our healing journey. So when I talk about intention, I talk about, well, I've decided that anytime I feel X, Y, Z emotions in association with this memory or with this trigger or with this experience, this is how I've committed to myself to dealing with it because I feel like this is the healthiest way forward. So when I talk about forgiveness, the intention to forgive doesn't mean that forgiveness is an instantaneous thing. And I think very few of us have the ability to forgive in that very moment but for me forgiveness is the choice that I make with intention every time the emotions come up or the anger comes up or you know whatever the emotion is comes up my intention is to let it go and then letting it go that's me practicing forgiveness so that's deciding that whenever I have a moment where I'm triggered or where that memory 
is jog, those emotions are there. I'm going to honor those emotions. I'm going to respect those emotions. But my intention behind honoring and respecting my emotions is to let them go. I'm not going to let them ruminate. I'm not going to let them build and fester. No, I'm going to let them go. And I know that each time that those emotions come up in response to those memories, and it's going to be several times as you cycle through the process that you need to close that chapter of your life off, to grieve, to deal with the loss, or whatever it is that you're dealing with in association with the requirement to forgive, it will lessen because your body is now being trained to respond the way that you intended rather than just cycling through and spiraling out because, you know, they're big emotions. And I think when we think about the depth of our emotions and power of our emotions, we recognize that intention is the only way forward. If we want to grow from the situations that can really be very harmful or that were harmful and detrimental to us, but intention tells us, tells our mind, body, and spirit what it is that we're hoping to do with these emotions as they come up, as they subside, and as they release, right? And I think that that's really important. And that intention is also cerebral. So that's my intention by way of existential intentionalism. But by cerebral intentionalism, I like to really demarcate between control and accountability. So my intention is never to control the situation or to control different outcomes, but to hold those accountable. So I think what some people do is when they hear me talk about forgiveness, releasing the energy that doesn't serve me. I'm talking about releasing the pain associated with the events that no longer serve me. I think that the pain in and of itself can be a big pain. When we think about processing pain, some of the pain that we've experienced is going to be a journey, right? It's going to be a process to heal. It's not going to be something that's done in several days or several weeks. Sometimes, even with intention and practice and with focus, it can take years to really heal from some of the very jarring and those very traumatic experiences. And so the second part of intention, the cerebral part of intention is really key in this. And it's really about how we define accountability. And I think accountability Accountability is something that is so important because a lot of society wants us to always sweep dirty deeds done in the dark under the rug. We want to sweep it under the rug and we think, well, letting it go means we don't hold people accountable. We kind of leave them and their fate to, you know, to the ether. And I do not believe in that. And I think really my two-pronged approach to intention is one to help me heal, help me make sure that those big emotions aren't ruminating and festering within me and creating a really unhealthy, toxic environment for me as I try to go and grow through my own life. I want to be able to carry the emotions, honor, respect those emotions and let them go as they come up because they're actually coming up to be released. They're not coming up to torment you. They're not coming up to harass you. They're coming up so that you deal with them, acknowledge them, and then to release them. But they're also a signal, well, hey, did we hold this person accountable? And part of how we can release the energy that doesn't serve us is holding the people accountable, speaking our truth, telling our story, and not allowing the dirty things done in the dark to be dismissed, right? And I think sometimes we allow people to convince us to be dismissive about the hurts and about the infractions and about the misconduct that took place from people who knew better or who should have done better because of their positions of authority or their positions relative to you in your life. And I think that it's really important for me, intention by way of accountability is also something that for me is a very timeless process. It is a journey, but I am very, very committed to accountability for the people who I felt were malicious in the way that they've handled me or who were intentional in the way that they, that they used relationships of proximity to me against me and I think that is really important for my healing journey because I have a really really strong social justice barometer but if I am wronged if I am smeared if I am lied about if I am gossiped about if I am undercut if I am disrespected that I hold those individuals accountable and that is a very different process from forgiveness I can forgive you the moment that it took place and in fact that's at least typically the way that I, I handle it because me forgiving you isn't for you. Me forgiving you is me giving myself the opportunity to release the venom that you impacted me with, with your negative actions and your negative intentions. But what I will do as a way of honoring and respecting myself as a testament to my self-respect is I will hold you accountable. And I don't think accountability has a rubric. There's not like a cookie cutter template for what accountability looks like. I think it's going to look different depending on the magnitude, on the impact, on the players. But for me, I always have a clear idea of how I want to hold people accountable and I am very steadfast. I am very methodical. I'm very strategic in making sure that when I think about accountability, I'm not thinking too small. I want to think big enough so that when I'm holding people accountable, they know that it is their actions that put them in that 
position. And I think sometimes we think forgiveness means not holding people accountable, not speaking our truth, allowing ourselves to be silenced. Absolutely not. Forgiveness is letting go the, of the energy that could potentially harm us and hurt our healing and our development journey. Accountability, attention by way of accountability, cerebral intention is about making sure that we do our due diligence and having justice, at least our part in justice being served. And I think justice is deeper, is beyond the legal system, is beyond policing, is beyond a lot of these, these institutions that are in place to impart justice. I think justice can be very, very spiritual as well. But I have to do my part. I have to make sure that I'm doing my part, that I'm using my voice so that justice knows that it needs to act in those situations. And I think we have allowed justice to be dormant in our own minds and in the way that we think about justice. We have allowed our role in justice to be very complacent. And because of that, a lot of people who did little things that were really bad in the dark are now getting bolder and doing bigger things and doing more ruthless things and more malicious things that they just don't know where to stop because we haven't given them those limits. But that's going to change as of hopefully when you watch this video. In any case, that's what I wanted to talk about right now. Really the power of intention, but the demarcate between the intention behind how we manage our own healing journey and also the intention behind how we deal with accountability. In any case, that was it, but definitely not all. Not before letting go, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month, every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page. So definitely be sure to tune in. Now these events are paid events, so if you do see yourself participating in our community on an ongoing basis, then I do suggest that you take a look at one of our package plans. Yes, we do offer package plans over and above our live events, as well as access to webinars and workshops that largely focus on self-mastery over and above those events. So make a point to check it out. Be part of our game changer community, being part of the change that you want to see, allowing us a small role to play in your journey. We are on the road to 1K. So we have all of our social media platforms and we look forward to chatting with all of you very soon. We'll talk to you later.